Hi everyone, my name is Miss Katie and I'm the Director of Children's Ministry at Camp Hill United Methodist Church. I am so happy that you are joining us for our very first Easter Jam called Reconnect. Now, you should have received a kit ahead of time that has everything that you need inside of it. So if you don't have that kit in front of you, I want you to pause this video, go grab it and bring it right back. Did you get it? Did, did you pause? Okay, great. So, like I said, everything that you will need is gonna be right inside that kit. And in this video, you'll go step by step in knowing exactly what you need. Now, this Easter is a time where you might not feel connected with other people in the church or families or friends, but we really wanna take this time to sing dance, learn the Easter story, and really connect and reconnect together as a family. I'm so happy again that you've joined us. I hope you have a wonderful time. Let us know that you're watching. Reach out to us on social media and tell us that you're watching and show us all the fun things that you're gonna do as a family. Happy Easter and enjoy our Easter Jam. most Easter eggs. No, I'm gonna get the most Easter eggs, but I'm gonna get the most Easter eggs. Okay, how many Easter eggs are you gonna get? I'm gonna get like 12. I'm gonna get 13. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> hi everyone. <laughs> Happy Easter. I'm your host and I am so excited that you've taken a few minutes to sit down and join me wherever you are. Together, we're gonna celebrate the most important event ever, Easter. Now, you and I both know, Easter is about more than eggs and chocolate and that fake grass you'll be vacuuming up for weeks. It's about the biggest moment in human history. But before I get to that, I thought it might be fun to take a look at how Easter has been celebrated in the past. Whoa, okay, <laughs> not quite as far back as the very first Easter. See, at that time, Jesus' disciples were hiding behind closed doors. And well, I think we've all had enough of that in the last year. I'm talking about the way our great grandparents celebrated Easter in style. Okay, let's be real. Some of you are in your PJs right now, or at least your comfy clothes, but earlier generations really knew how to make the day festive. And of course, some of the traditions we know and love today started many years ago. Take Easter eggs. See, Easter eggs were first decorated more than 500 years ago as a symbol of new life. Check this out. You've got egg art of all kinds. Carved eggs, wooden eggs, whoa! Painted eggs, it's so beautiful. And the classic plastic eggs. But my personal favorite, the chocolate cream egg. See, in the United States, we even have a national tradition called the Easter egg roll that has happened every year at the White House since 1878. And since none of us are actually at the White House today, I thought it would be fun for every family to do your very own Easter egg roll right now. So first, figure out how many in your family are going to play. Then go get an egg for each family member. It can be a plastic egg or if you're hardcore, use real eggs. You got 30 seconds to go grab them right now. Got your eggs? Perfect. Now for your egg roll. Okay, 
I need you to find a place in your house where your whole family can line up side by side as if you're on an imaginary starting line. Then create a finish line on the floor as far as you can from the starting line. This could be a pillow, a towel, anything. Then your family will count down from three and start rolling your egg from the starting line to the finish line. First family member to get your egg to the finish line wins. Ready, set, okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you can't just roll the egg with your finger. That's too easy. You have to roll the egg with your nose. Boom! Okay, everybody ready? We're putting a one minute timer on the clock. This Easter egg roll is happening in three, in two, one, go! So serious fun with those Easter eggs. And if a few of them got busted, oh, well, as you'll see in just a few minutes, Easter is all about things that are messy and broken and finding a way to put it all back together again. But right now, I've got one more classic Easter tradition to share with you. Chocolate Easter bunnies. Mom, I thought we got the big ones. No, that's okay, it's gold. The first ones showed up in Germany in the mid 1850s, but they became popular in 1890 when an American shop owner stuck a five foot chocolate bunny in his window. Five feet, that's taller than a lot of you. Oh, and kids, I really think you should know, 81% of parents will sneak some of their kids Easter candy. Watch your baskets. With that in mind, we've got a special activity for your family called Bust your bunny! First, figure out how many in your family are going to play. The more the merrier. Then you need a chocolate bunny and some icing or frosting for each player. Doesn't matter how you say it or if it comes in a tube or a tub. You can play in teams if you like. You'll also need one hand towel and one hammer. <laughs> yeah, I said hammer. But don't sweat it if you can't get one right now. A book? A can of soup, even your fist will work. Okay, press pause now to get everything and everyone in position for the game. I'll wait right here. Okay, got everything? All right, here's how you play. First, each player or team will need to bust their bunny. Yep, you heard me. Cover the chocolate bunny with a hand towel to prevent any fine pieces. Then give the bunny a whack with the hammer. Trust me, don't go crazy here. One solid smack will do. Ready? And. Oh. Yeah, just one. Once everyone has properly busted up their bunny, the game is ready to begin. Your whole family will count to three and then begin gluing the bunny back together with their tube or tub of frosting. The first team to finish wins, got it? Oh, and it has to look good, right? Oh yeah, bust your bunny is happening in three, in two, one, go. was a mess, but 
I'm sure your results were, well, creative. Mm. And delicious. <laughs> And make sure you post a pic of your glued back together bunny on social media. Show all your friends and your family. Now, as we've said earlier, Easter is all about something good coming out of something bad. It's about a plan that God formed from the foundation of the world. Just like this lily grew from a dry bulb in the dark earth, God's plan took shape out of darkness and, and brokenness. And at the right time, he brought about the most amazing, breathtaking, beautiful event this world has ever known. Let's take a look. In the beginning, God created everything. He formed people in his own image. There was nothing between God and us. It was peaceful. It was perfect. But then, we turned away from God. When sin entered the world, everything broke. It seemed there was no way for us to be whole again. But God loved us so much. That he made a plan to rescue us. God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus connected with people, old and young, happy or hurting, people like you and me. Jesus healed the sick and forgave those who hurt others. His closest friends saw Jesus was the one sent by God to fix this broken world and make us right with God. They couldn't wait for it to happen. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But the religious leaders thought Jesus would change too much. They made plans to stop him. At a special dinner, Jesus told his friends that he had to leave them, but he would return. That night, Jesus was arrested. He was beaten and given a fake trial. The religious leader sent Jesus to the Roman governor, who could sentence him to die. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law, but a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in. He handed Jesus over to Roman soldiers. Jesus carried the heavy rough beam of his own wooden cross up a hill. Soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood and raised him off the ground. But Jesus never stopped showing God's love and mercy. Even from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive those people who were hurting him. Finally, Jesus called out, It is finished. Then he died. Jesus' body was placed inside a stone tomb with a huge rock blocking the entrance. It seemed the plan had failed, that the world was broken forever, that no one could put the pieces back together. Early Sunday morning, on the day we call Easter, Mary Magdalene hurried to the tomb. She wanted to make sure Jesus' body was buried properly. But something was wrong. The stone was rolled away. When Mary looked inside, the tomb was empty. Mary saw a man and asked for help. The man called her name, and then she knew. It was Jesus, alive! God's plan could not be stopped, even by death. His love was too big. Jesus, God's son, took all our broken pieces all of our sin and made something new. Jesus lived and died and, and rose, rose again, again so we could be right with God forever. forever. Wow. You know, I hear that story every Easter and it always amazes me. I mean, God 
sent Jesus to the world to remind me that he is greater than anything that can go wrong in my world. The simple fact that Jesus came back to life is proof to me that I can face anything bad that happens. When you believe in Jesus and follow him, you begin living in peace with a God who can always take broken pieces and make them into something amazing. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you had fun and I hope you spend the rest of the day making some great memories with your family. Happy Easter, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Where did I put those chocolate bunnies? Oh, yes. Bye. The greatest day in history. Let this beat and you have rescued me. Sing it out. Jesus is alive. The empty grave, life eternal. You have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. Celebrate, Jesus is alive